Are we? Here is Justice League Quarterly 5 from 1991. And this is a title that did not need to exist. This is... They already had two ongoing Justice League series. They already had annuals each year for those. Do we really need four more specials a year added to the mix? It is too much of a good thing. And Justice League International had already stopped being a good thing when we got to these. The other train of thought is that I think these quarterly specials may have been the dumping ground for inventory stories. Our main one that we are looking at today is by Martin Quaid. I really want to counter the notion that I enter into a story like this with pre-established hatred or bias on the basis that it is a story by Martin Quaid. This here does have its moments of being terrible, but there's some bits that are adequate. Let me just say up front, it is not getting torn to shreds at the end. It is not a great story, but it's not a painful one. And it even manages to be less annoying than some of the Kevin Griffin ones from this time. The actual plot isn't one of the strong suits here. This setup is good, but it turns out to be not important. We have Super Adaptoid ganning around and absorbing the powers of various DC heroes like Geodude from The Insiders and then Gladiator from The Imperial Guard. When it came time to assess this, I realised how much time was devoted to this and how it is, in the politest way possible, padding the page count. None of this matters. It could have happened off panel or you could have single panels showing each of the characters and these instances. Anyway, we eventually get to our Justice League. We have Blue Beetles and Green Lanterns, the Gary Gardner version. It is an okay scene. The humour is a lot less upfront and all-encompassing than in the Kevin Griffin stories. And these are two characters that you can have joke about. And this scene, I think, is decent. Martin Quaid also uses it as a way to establish two of the other heroes who have had their powers stolen by Super Adaptoid. A uh, Mummy Mon from the Dome People. And then on the next page, Starman. I don't know why he couldn't have maybe shown one at the start and then established the other four here. I don't know. I try not to apply too much lateral thinking to an inconsequential filler story by Martin Quaid. Here is a weird one. We have this really good scene with The Vision and Gwen Stefani. Can I just say, I have been doing these videos so long, I have started forgetting why I called certain characters by certain names. This exchange here 
this little scene, it is a really good interaction between the two characters. But there is one problem here. And that is, Martin Quaid, unfortunately, did not know how to start the scene. It feels like Vision just walks into the room and goes, Oh, by the way, let's talk about your feelings of inadequacy. And that is a shame because it is the best scene in the issue. So, here is our team. We have a team made up of members of both the two Justice League squads. And it is nearly not a bad team. There is one character here who makes it impossible to take it seriously. Feel free to speculate down below who I am referring to. It should become really obvious when you realise I am not talking about the Russian Iron Man cosplayer. The artwork... The art has its moments, but it does feel like it's trying very hard to simulate Keith Magoo's style. It doesn't always work. I find the close-ups of faces, which there's plenty of on this page, they lack just the slightest bit of detail to make them look like they have any emotion. And after this, we get to the negative section of this video. We have a lot of shit here. First, Blue Beatles is placed on monitor duty. And this is played as a bit about Gwen Stefani. She was feeling underpowered and like she didn't belong on the team. She was wanting to be put on monitor duty. But Blue Beatles bagsied it. We will come back to this utterly pointless scene that just exists to shit on Gwen Stefani. Much like how this scene is the same. Whereas the bit with the vision had Gwen Stefani voice her own feelings and her fears about being useless. Now, Martin Quaid decides to insist upon that actually being the case. They get attacked by one of the Adaptoids. Oh, that is the twist. There are five Adaptoids and they each have one of the powers they stole. Uh, Red Guardian was... The other one whose powers they stole. I hadn't mentioned them yet. It's not important. Here we see that Gwen Stefani's powers. Despite in my opinion being incredibly useful. They are not enough to stop Super Adaptoid. And then Gary Gardner. Whose name I can never forget the origin of. Gary Gardner is Neil Morrissey's nigh unwatchable character in one of my favourite bad movies, Run For Your Wife. Gardner, wasn't it, sir? But you can call me Gary. I'm one of the government's vital statistics. Beg your pardon? I'm temporarily unemployed. I see. Although I'm thinking of making it permanent. Really? Yeah, the hours are good. <laughs> Did you tell that reporter I'd got sexually transmitted spots? Why? Gary Gardner is insisting how Gwen Stefani isn't helping at all and how she is useless. 
Now, Gary Gardner is a character that can say this sort of stuff. But he is not a character to say it about Gwen Stefani. This is the one character you shouldn't have Gary Gardner be a dick to. Because they are meant to be a uh, will they, won't they couple. So the adaptoid, it quickly takes out Gary Gardner and Supergirl. And then leaves Gwen Stefani because she isn't even perceived as a threat. Which is fucking nonsense. She has a power which is control over one of the elements. How is the machine to know that she is feeling a bit insecure today? So then... She takes Gary Gardner's ring, which I am sure is at odds with Green Lantern's mythology. And she can actually use it. She uses it to fly. She uses it to follow the adaptoid. And then she ends up captured anyway. Let's focus down here. Great. I had the most powerful weapon in the universe at my command, and I still blew it. This takes on a more insidious tone when you remember that Martin Quaid, in the mid-90s, he was given a crossover to revitalise the Justice League. And one of the first things he did was pointlessly kill off this character. There is no debate in my mind that he truly thinks this is a shit character and a weak woman who deserved to die. There is some, I guess, payoff to Gwen Stefani's confidence. And that she is able to talk down the bad guy, Ivo Shandor. I probably called him Ivan Ooze in another video, but Ivo Shandor is better. So the rest of the Justice League team have come to Freya. And look, there is Blue Beetles. Blue Beetles is there. He has. Lines of dialogue and everything. What was the point of that scene establishing that Blue Beetles was taking monitor duty? Besides using it as a gateway for the story to be mean about Gwen Stefani some more. Here is a sequence entirely devoted to Blue Beetles. The character who isn't meant to be there. He's meant to be back at base on monitor duty. The script explicitly said so. Despite that, it is an okay story. It is not electrifying or a must-read sensation. But there is some acceptance along the way. That is not the worst thing ever. I have neglected the actual plot here. Ivo Shandor has created these new adaptoids to drain power from heroes because he wants them to use those powers to kill him. He is tired of living because he has become a fat, overweight, obese man. Nice for Martin Quaid to be a bad guy who is now defined by fat shaman. So Gwen Stefani talks to him and then he is cured and returned to normal. He is thin again. It's meant to be saying Gwen Stefani might not be very powerful or very useful, but... 
She is a woman who can talk to the bad guys about their feelings. I didn't really know. Its message is obviously meant to be she has her uses, but the story doesn't make that much sense when they are ignoring that she's actually quite powerful and all the characters and herself have insisted she is useless. There are backup stories by other writers, but I didn't have time to cover them. They are likely inventory stories too. Justice League International? More like Justice League Inventory. I didn't know where to go after that. It feels like the ultimate critique to end all critiques of this. This isn't dreadful. Seven thumbs up. 